Just like you, I was seeing it across the board, not just in my own clinic, but in the hospital settings where I was working at. And then I started to delve into the medical literature and I realized that it wasn't just me and it's certainly not just you, Ross, but actually most people that set out to achieve any kind of goal end up right back where they started. 95% of people who go on to lose weight end up regaining that weight again. So I'm Dr. Ross Walker. I'm a cardiologist and preventative health expert. And I'm Dr. Gina Cleo, your personal habit change expert. And together we've we've over 60 years of collective experience. You can guess that I'm probably contributing more to the 60 years than the, the lovely younger, much younger Gina is. And we're on a mission here to help you improve your health transform your habits so you can eat, live, and move better, one episode at a time without the fluff or the fads. We're so excited to be here for our third episode this week. We're going to learn more about the lovely Dr. Gina, my co-host on this podcast. It's lovely to be with you, Gina. So good to be here, Dr. Ross. Now, even though she looks incredibly young, Dr. Dr. Gina Cleo is one of the world's leading experts in habits. She completed her PhD in habit change at Bond University. We'll hear a lot about that, of course, where her habit change research has been published in various medical journals and has gained recognition all around the globe. She's appeared for over 200 news outlets. She she must be tired, including Australia's major networks, ABC News, The Today Show, and Studio 10. She's also a regular keynote speaker and expert panelist at national and international conferences. So, Gina, tell us how this all started for you. Well, like any good story, Ross, this started in my childhood, my career. My, I saw my grandparents, both of them struggled with type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And so, that sorry, but where did you grow started. up though, Jenny? Where did you grow up? Oh, I, grew up in, I grew up in Egypt. So my family is like a real big foodie family. We love food. We love feasting. And, and that's probably why I noticed my grandparents' health concerns impacting their life because they couldn't eat and feast like we did. They would always have like special food or just different food to us. And what I wanted for them wasn't so much the feasting, but it was just the quality of life that I felt like they were missing. So that inspired me to want to become a dietitian to help people like my grandparents and others. And I became a dietitian and honestly, I loved my career. I worked across various hospitals. I had my own private practice. I worked in various different clinics. But what I often saw, and you may relate to this, Ross, is I would often see clients and they would come back and they would want to be working on the exact same things we'd already worked on before. Say, for example, they came in and they wanted to focus on weight management. We'd achieve their goals and we'd put in all this effort. And then a few months later, they'd come back and they've regained all the weight and wanting to start again. Can, can, I, just, can I just say, I, I've, I've seen that so often. People say, oh, doc, I lost 10 kilos. I felt so good. Then I put it all back on. Yeah. And it seems to be this pattern. And and it's so validating hearing you say that because when I first was seeing this pattern, I was like, I must be a dud dietitian. I think, and I just thought, because I've got this foodie background and because I grew up feasting in my culture, maybe, just maybe, I'm a bit too lenient when it comes to advice around food and I'm not very objective. But just like you, I was seeing it across the board, not just in my own clinic, but in the hospital settings where I was working at. And then I started to delve into the medical literature and I realized that it wasn't just me and it's certainly not just you, Ross, but actually most people that set out to achieve any kind of goal end up right back where they started. 95% of people who go on to lose weight end up regaining that weight again. So it wasn't just me. And this started this like burning desire in me to learn more about sustainable change, to understand how I can help people achieve long-term outcomes. I didn't want to see people in my clinic over and over again. I started calling them frequent flyers. It's like, oh, I know you by name and that's not a good thing. So I put my clinic on hold and I went on and did a PhD. I was very fortunate to be awarded a scholarship at Bond University to do a PhD looking at sustainable change. And at first, I had no idea what I was looking for. I was just 
reading all about the brain and trying to understand what motivates us, why we do the things we do, why we plan on doing one thing and end up doing another. You know, why is it in the morning I say I'm going to exercise and I end up scrolling on Facebook Marketplace for a whole hour and miss my gym class altogether? Why do these things happen? And I found a really interesting case in habits. And I found everything I read pointed in the same direction, that habits were the only proven method to achieve any sort of long-term success. And it was a groundbreaking moment for me. I And I knew it theoretically, but of course, being me, I wanted to put it to the test. And I ran several clinical trials. I put it to the test. And over and over again, habit change was just coming back with these phenomenal outcomes, outcomes that we'd really never seen before in research. So one of them, for example, is when people start to lose weight, for example, and as soon as they get off whatever diet program they're on, they tend to regain the weight. We call it the Nike swoosh of weight regain. So they lose weight and they go back up again. What we found in our clinical trial was that people lost weight at the beginning But then a year after these habit change trials had finished, people continued to lose weight a year after the study had finished. And that was just super groundbreaking to the point where, as you said You're saying because you changed their habits. Yeah, that's right. There's this desire, I want to lose weight, but that's just making a statement, doing nothing. But you've got to, people have to really get in there look at their habits and make sure they develop the right habits. Exactly right. And, you know, the habits that we were developing with our participants weren't around diet or exercise. They were just around general lifestyle things, things that are so easy, like pack a healthy snack when you leave for work or, you know, take the stairs rather than the escalator. Really little, simple, achievable, bite-sized pieces. And it resulted in these incredible outcomes. And You know, you said it before, Ross, when you said I must have been exhausted with doing so much media. I was. As soon as my first study was published, I was contacted by the media and I think I was doing media full time for about two months, full time. It was just back to back. It was insane. But that was such a blessing I see now because it really catapulted my career and made the message of habits much more spread out into the world and more and more people got to hear about it. And I've written a book called The Habit Revolution, which is uh, will be out in January 2024. And in that book, it's a real, it's a mixture of the patients that I've seen, the people that I've helped with habit change over the last decade, and of course, all the wonderful research that happens in this behavior change space. That's extraordinary. And, and I've got to say, you're talking about habits and that, in fact, the, the smartest nun talking about habits at the convent with Sister Teresa. I used to call her none the wiser. Oh <laughs> For those of you who haven't heard Dr. Ross's jokes, you will get used to this. <laughs> There's always a joke wherever Dr. Ross is. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Try my hardest. Okay, so you've spoken about these habits for so long now and you've, you've written this book. We all can't wait to read the book. When, when is, the, is the book available at the moment? It'll be coming out in January 2024. Right. So it's not far. So we can be, get very excited about that. But what you're going to do on these podcasts is teach us how to develop these important, simple habits. Is that right? You betcha. I'm the kind of person I can't shut up about habits. So wherever I have a microphone or an audience, you can guarantee I will be talking about simple, achievable, practical changes to our habits to improve our health and wellness. Okay, so tell us a bit about your interests outside of your work. Ooh, you know, I'm so much like you where my work is my hobby and my passion, which sounds super boring, but I do have other interests. I live on acreage. So, you know, this morning I did a burn off in the backyard with my husband. For those of you who don't know that is, well, that is when you have extra palm fronds and leaves and things that drop from all the beautiful trees we have in our yard. And we put them in a pile and we burn them off. Yeah, but there's a bit of an advantage there because I hear your husband's a firefighter. He is a firefighter and he always wears his uniform when we do the burn off so the neighbours don't get concerned. Right. Oh, very good. Very good. But you also, you also love animals as well. I do. I love dogs. I'm a dog mum. I have a dog, Macy Gray, who is just my whole world. 
And I hear you have a dog joke, actually. I haven't heard it, but I'd love to know your dog joke. Oh, look, I, I love animals. I just couldn't eat a whole one. No, no. My... Oh, my gosh, Ross, too far. Oh, my, no, my dog joke is very straightforward. You know what a Shih Tzu is? Yeah, a Shih Tzu is a little white fluffy dog. No, it's a zoo with no animals. <laughs> to be fair, that would be a really shit zoo. You're that right. would be a very, very bad zoo, but anyhow. Well, well, is there anything else you wanted to let let everyone know about you? Anything people to know about me? You know, I think my passion really comes from the incredible results that I see in people who are brave enough to ditch the short-term behavior change and are brave enough to apply a completely different method, which is long-term habit change. And the beautiful, I would say the biggest results that I see is freedom. And it's freedom from having to rely on their willpower, which doesn't work long term. And I think that's a whole nother, you know, episode we can talk about willpower. Freedom from the disappointing yo-yo life and freedom from being stuck in the same place where they're just not living their best life. I've seen people, you know, in their early 20s and people in their late 70s benefit from the incredibly transformative power of habit change and I truly do this because I adore what I do. Yeah. Well, I, I wrote a book 20 years ago called Diets Don't Work. And I think that's, that's part of all this. Diets don't work because you go on a diet like you go on a holiday. What happens if you go on a holiday? You come home. And I think we've got to start teaching people the right sort of habits that will stay with them for the rest of their life, not just for a 12-week program. Amen to that, Ross. Amen to that. Right. Well, look, that brings us to the end of this week's episode. And uh, thanks so much for listening. We, we hope you've really enjoyed to know more about our, our wonderful chief behavioral scientist, Dr. Gina Cleo, and her expertise around habit change. We're so excited to hear more about her knowledge in upcoming episodes, especially next week's episode. And this is really interesting, where Gina and I are going to talk about the currently trending topic of Ozempic. So, and we're, we're going to explore how, what is Ozempic? How does it work? And is it the magic bullet for weight loss? We'll take a look at the preliminary research and what that has to say about Ozempic and hear what Dr. Gina Cleo has to say about it from a perspective of habit change. And in the meantime, whatever platform you're listening to today, please go ahead and subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss it when we drop a new episode. So that's all from us. Thanks again. We'll see you next week. See you next week.